with nothing changing for a couple of months. So I'm going to mute you all now. And you're going to settle down onto your backs. And to start with, just lie however you're most comfortable. And it's really that giving the weight of your body to the ground. And that doesn't always happen straight away. So sometimes it's just like, oh, it's such a relief to lie down that we can instantly feel heavy and settled. But sometimes it takes a little bit more time. So perhaps what you could do to start with is have two or three big sighing breaths. So let the breath come in through your nostrils and exhale with a big sigh and do that a couple more times letting your breath come in hi sarah so sarah we're lying down and oh mabel's looking bigger <laughs> letting your breath go. so nice to see so many dogs joining us today and perhaps one more time letting a breath come in <sighs> exhaling, feeling your body is heavy on the ground. And then maybe bring your hands onto the front of your body. So on your belly, on your low front ribs, and that feeling of gathering your awareness into the center of yourself or a center of yourself and feeling the movement of the breath there. Just how does that feel? So we've done a couple more active breaths when we did the sighing breath. And now it's just about feeling the movement of our breath in our body. So how the body responds to the breathing. And also just seeing how that is for you right now. So again, sometimes we can find that very easy to drop into that feeling of our breathing. Other times, if our mind is a bit busier, then perhaps it's, um, it's not so easy. So we're going to start to move a little bit. First of all, just a very simple rolling of your head to the right and to the left. So as you let your head roll to the right and to the left, notice how your neck feels. Notice how the back of the contact of the back of your head on the floor changes. It might be that you discover some sort of lumps and bumps. So a couple more times, letting the head roll to the right and to the left. And from doing so, finding a comfortable place to settle your head down. With the center of the back of your head on the floor. And then if your legs are long, you're going to bend your knees and stand your feet on the floor. Take a moment to feel the contact of your footprints on the floor, to feel the contact of the back of your pelvis on the floor, and also to have a sense, and you might have that already, you might not, of just how you're feeling around the pelvis, the lower back today. And you're going to start to tilt your knees to the right and to the left. So as you introduce some movement around this lower part of your body, it might become clearer to you if you are feeling stiff or creaky or achy around the lower back. I mean, usually if we have, you know, these things going on in our bodies, they're, they're, they make themselves known. So just a few more times, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. And then you're going to settle down in the center. You're going to keep your right knee bent and you're going to lengthen your left leg out. And we're going to work with this position, so this foot pressing position. So you can do this a few times with your arms just resting on the floor beside you. So how does it feel as you press? You want to have your right foot standing on the floor, Mel, when you're ready. How does it feel as you press into your right foot and let your pelvis tilt towards the left? 
So we're going to try this with a couple of different arm positions, but you want to go quite easy with this and give your body time to start to undo a little bit. So as we press into the right foot and the right side of the pelvis lifts, it starts to bring a bit of movement into the ribs and the right side of the body. So you could bring your left hand across the front of your body onto the right low ribs and encourage. So as your pelvis is lifting on the right, you could use your left hand to encourage those right ribs to come along with the pelvis. That's it. Very nice. And keep moving in and out of this pressing. So keep stop, keep stopping pressing and letting your pelvis come down to the floor on the right. And then come back into the movement. So I just, yeah, I find this movement so helpful. It's very soothing. It's very helpful for starting to ease out the body. So perhaps once or twice more with your left hand across your body, encouraging those right ribs to come along with the movement of the pelvis. And then you're gonna carry on on this side. So you're gonna carry on with your right knee bent and then you're gonna cross your arms over your chest. So your right arm is on top. So most of you, I think you all know this one. So as you press into your right foot, you now roll across your upper back towards the back of the left shoulder. And you can reach your right fingertips out on the floor over towards the left. So you can sort of reach your fingertips, that's it, Lynn, towards the bed. <laughs> Yeah, so if you sort of slide your fingertips along the floor, so yeah, rather that's it. So keep that sit, keep sort of trailing the fingertips that sit along the floor. But keep your knee moving forwards over your footprint. So don't let your knee wander too much over to the left. That's very nice. So what you're feeling now is you're rolling more onto the left side of the body. And the whole of your body is involved in this movement. So it's not just the right side of the pelvis lifting, it's the whole of the right side. And so do this a couple more times. Just very nice, see how that feels. Good. And keep it sort of easy and comfortable. And then you can come back to the center, uncross your arms for a moment. Still keep that right knee bent and that right foot standing on the floor. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then we're going to try the one. And it's interesting because I had a, I, I had a, a very stiff right shoulder yesterday, but this is something I really wanted to do. We're going to try the one where we bring the right hand to stand on the floor, a bit like a, it's like a full back arch arm. It's easier, so just the right hand. It's easier to get that hand in place when the right side of your pelvis is off the floor. So if you press into your right foot, let the right side of your pelvis come off the floor. Then you can bring your hand into place. So your hand is standing on the floor beside your head. See if that's possible. That's it. And so now you're pressing into your hand and your foot. So you let, again, your right shoulder would be coming away from the floor and you'll be letting your head roll towards the left and just see how it feels. And if it feels too much for your shoulder at this point in the day, or any point in the day, don't do it. That's it, good. So we'll just see a few times, how does it feel to press into the foot and into the hand? So the back of the pelvis and the back of the right shoulder, the right, yeah, the right side of the pelvis and the back of the right shoulder come away from the floor. And you're opening out through the right side of your body. Good, letting your head roll towards the left. And perhaps just do this once or twice more. So some of you look like you're quite enjoying this movement. And I just think it really, really varies how we're feeling any given day. That's very nice. Some of you I can see it's sort of releasing as you do it. So 
When you've had enough, you can yet yeah, sit, release your arm. Yes, give your hand a shake out, Lynn. That's a good, a good move. Release your arm. And Tim, you might want to, yes, do the same thing with both legs. So see, do you want to lengthen your legs out? Do you want to bend both knees? Some of you want to fold both knees into your chest. So just, yeah, doing, doing the same thing for a moment, having a couple of quiet breaths. Yeah, letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. Yes, bouncing the knees on the ground is nice. And in a moment, we're going to see how all of those movements feel on the other side. So with the left knee bent. That's it. So when you're ready, bending your left knee, finding a good place to stand your left foot on the floor, lengthening your right leg out. And then when you're ready, arms resting on the floor to start with, start to press down into that left foot, letting the left side of the pelvis lift and your weight rolls to the right. And again, like we did on the other side, you could take your right arm across your body. So your right hand, your right fingers are encouraging your ribs, your low left ribs to come along with the movement. As the pelvis lifts, it takes those ribs with it, but we can encourage them gently with our hand as well. Ah, oh, see, so Lynn, the other arm for the moment. So if you take your right, that's it. The right arm comes onto your low ribs. So that, yeah, so the first thing we did was the right arm. Yeah, that's it, good. <laughs> you remembered. So I am going to make it, there's a few things here we're going through to have to remember. Good. So there, are you all right there, Mel? Just hold on. Yeah, Mel, okay, good. Good. Okay, so whenever you want to, you can move on to the second version, which was exactly the one you were thinking of, Lynn, when you cross your arms over your chest with your left arm on top. So crossing the arms over the chest, the left arm is on top. You're going to now, as you press into your right, your left foot, also roll across the back of your shoulders. So you're rolling towards the back of the right shoulder and your left fingertips sort of reach out on the floor towards the right. That's it, and your head rolls towards the right. So this can be very nice. It's just keep this, you know, really sort of soft and smooth and can it be a movement that just starts to get into all those little dusty tight corners of ourselves, of our ribs, of our shoulders, of our pelvis and lower back. Good. Very nice. So in your own time, you might find it's helpful to coordinate the pressing movement with exhaling. Yes, whenever you feel that you want to have a little breather before we move on to the next variation, you can do. So sometimes it's really helpful to pause, have a little rest for a moment. Sometimes it's helpful to stay moving, depending how we're feeling on any given day. So as you'll probably hopefully all remember, the third variation is the one where we do that sort of back arch, full back arch arm. So and it's easier to get your hand in place when you're the, the left side of your pelvis is off the floor. So it might be that you press into your left foot, let the left side of the pelvis come away, and then you slide your hand into place. That's it. And when you've brought your hand into place, it's, it's good to have your hands Whatever you can place it down most easily, but maybe not too close to the side of your head. And then it's that feeling, can we press into the foot and the hand? Yes. And how does that feel? Think about as you're pressing into your hand, sending your elbow towards the wall um, that's at the top of your head. Right? The crown. So wherever the crown of your head is pointing, Yes, that's good, Sharon. Taking your elbow, the other elbow on the other hand onto that elbow could be helpful. To sort of circle into that hand a little bit. Good. 
Just exploring, is it, yes, is it possible to press into that hand? That's nice. Well done. Well done. And again, it may be more challenging on one side than the other. So make sure your wrists are okay. You can just do that a few times. Whenever you've had enough, you can undo. Release your arm. Yes, you can give your hands a little shake out. You can be lengthen both legs out, bend both knees, whatever you like. And then when you've when you've done whatever it is you you want to do, before we come off our backs, you're going to bend both knees, stand both feet on the floor, and this is in wondering now yes you're going to see how does it feel it's two or three times to roll up and down through bridge pose keeping it really easy so you're not trying to yeah, do anything anything spectacular you're just seeing how does it feel to plant both feet on the floor to sink down into your feet to let the pelvis come away from the floor and some of the spine and then place the spine back down again vertebrae by vertebrae So what's quite interesting to feel is when you roll up in bridge pose after doing those other movements, how, how easily does your spine come away from the floor? And again, you know, we might still be having a day where we're feeling quite tight around the lower back. So yes, but pelvis wiggling is very nice smell. So. Lovely, very nice bridge poses. So two or three times rolling up and down in bridge pose. And when you've had enough of that, there's no rush, you can take your time, but if you, when you have had enough, you can fold your knees into your chest. When you have folded your knees into your chest, you can just yeah, what to feel what you want to do there. It might be a little bit of rocking or a little bit of circling around the back of your pelvis. That's nice. Then circling into the hip joints is nice. Good. And then the other thing that I always like is taking my legs up to the ceiling, giving the legs and maybe the arms a bit of a shake out. Very nice to see your feet, Rosie. And we're going to, in a moment, it's not too much of a shock, but we're going to be coming over into standing. So just maybe let yourself um, come to terms with that prospect. I think from here, so I'm just checking. Yes, from here, it might be that you want to roll onto your side, have a few breaths on your side, and then make your way over into standing. So we're not doing anything too, too dramatic in the standing to start with. We're going to do a little bit of loosening ourselves up and then we're going to do some simple balances. And then we're going to yeah, come down onto hands and knees and then come back into standing and perhaps do a bit more, a little bit more hold balances. So just let yourself arrive for a moment in standing. So especially after lying down, it might be advisable just to settle for a moment. So looking at your feet, feet hip width apart and parallel. Maybe a little bit of swaying from side to side so we can feel our weight dropping down through our footprints into the floor. And just yes, how does it feel to be in standing after all those lying things? And Perhaps from a little bit of swaying, you could settle in the centre for a moment. You could close your eyes for a moment and maybe have a couple of big sighing breaths in standing. And then we'll move a little bit more. So we'll come into 
swinging our arms ever so easy I'm just thinking about releasing letting the whole body come along with the movement so it's always interesting when we move from one so it's a plane of movement so let's say from lying down to standing what do we notice where perhaps do we feel tightness or tension what can we do to ease that out so a couple more times swinging our arms we're then going to do a little bit a couple of little side lengthening movements see how that feels so you can let your arms go you can settle your feet down let a breath come in and as the breath leaves you, you can exhale, take your arms up and just start to reach up through one side, one arm, one side. So if like me, you're shifting your weight as you reach, you're shifting your weight into the reaching arm side. So it feels like the whole side of your body is lengthening and the other side is not lengthening, is shortening a little bit. And from here in a moment, we're going to sweep down into a forward bend. But remember, if your lower back is feeling a bit vulnerable today, bend your knees, rest your elbows on your thighs. So entirely up to you, come into a forward bend, elbows on your thighs if that's helpful. Or ah, releasing all the way down. And just noticing in the forward bend, what do you feel? So usually it's you know, the back of our legs. We're opening out a bit more through the front of the body, lying down. So the back of the legs may well be feeling tight. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then as you exhale, rolling back up into standing. Good. And settling once more feet hip width apart and parallel. I'd just like you to come to a little bit of rocking your weight forwards and back along the length of your footprints and seeing how that feels. So rocking the weight towards the heels, towards the balls of the toes. And then eventually you're going to let the heels come up. So we just come into this little balancing movement where we're on the balls of our toes. And this is just really good for the feet. So it's asking the feet to flex. It's asking the arches of the feet to find a little bit of support and strengthen. Good, so just keep coming in and out a few times and see how that feels. How does it feel in the ankles as well? So if you're coming up onto the balls of your feet and that feels okay, the next time you do it, just see if you can perhaps have a cycle or two of breath there. Keep the arms hanging for the moment, dropping down away from the shoulders. Good. And come back down. You could just in each foot for a moment, just come onto the top of the toes. This doesn't feel particularly pleasant. It's just one foot at a time. Just let the toes bend the other way. And then we'll come back up again. And this time we'll take our arms up. So. Settle your feet back down, shift your weight forwards onto the balls of your feet. Once you feel steady, you can then float your arms out to the sides and up, letting your shoulders stay dropped and just see how it feels to stay here. It's all the sense of we have this intention to balance, to feel steady, but what is the reality today? Another cycle of breath, feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leave you. Come back down and again go down into a forward bend. And just see how the backs of the legs feel, bending the knees as much as you like, letting your head go, letting your arms go. Good. Resting your elbows on your thighs if that's best for your back. Lovely. Very nice. Let a breath come in as the breath leaves you. Sink into your heels. Roll back up into standing. Well, that's it. Roll back up into standing. 
We're going to do that same little balance, but we're going to move with our breath now. And we're going to stay, um, well, to maybe do it with me, and then uh, hopefully it will make sense, because we're going to stay up in the balance, but move our arms down for one cycle of breath. So from here, um, let a breath leave you. And as you breathe in, you're going to come up into the balance, bringing your arms up. And then stay balancing on the balls of your feet. But as you exhale, bring your arms down in front of you. And then as you breathe in, bring your arms up again. And then this time you bring your arms and your heels down. So some of you may well remember this from times past. So we'll try that twice more. So breathing in, coming up onto the balls of the feet, bringing the arms up, the shoulders stay down. Exhaling, bringing the arms down, but keep on the balls of the feet. Breathing in again. And then exhaling, the arms and the heels come down. Let's try that once more. So breathing in. The shoulders relax, let the arms come down as you exhale. And again, as you breathe in, bring your arms up. Now this time you could stay here for an extra breath or two if you like. Letting the shoulders drop. Try to settle yourself on the balls of your feet. Good, and then as you exhale, we'll bring the arms down and the heels down and we'll come all the way down into that forward bend again. <sighs> Letting the head go, letting the arms go. If you want to do your little weeping willow movements where you're trailing your fingertips to the right and to the left around the front of your feet, you can do if that feels nice. Or you can just be in your forward bend, breathing, releasing, noticing what you feel. And see if you can have another breath or two in the forward bend. And then whenever you're ready, sinking into your heels as you exhale, rolling back up into standing. So we're going to think a little bit more about um, balancing, this time on one foot. And we're going to connect this to walking. So if you come towards the back of your mat and have a little look at your feet and we're going to walk forwards along, and forwards and back along the mat a couple of times. So from here look at your feet and then find a point to look at on the wall in front of you and then slowly so you can feel each footprint walk forwards on your mat feeling your feet. So it's a, it's a bit of a funny walk, a bit of an exaggerated walk. And then go backwards, doing the same thing. So you probably have to slow down a bit anyway to go backwards and really feel your feet. So all the time our intention here is to just drop our weight down into our feet and to not look down. So try going forwards again, feeling each footprint. As your foot plants down, the other foot picks up. And then backwards again, and you're still looking forwards, you're not looking down, you're feeling your feet on the mat. This time stop when you get to the back of your mat, because we're going to take this into balance. So what I'd like you to do now is to step forwards with your right foot. So feel the right foot on the floor, one. Step forwards with the left foot, two. Step forwards onto the right foot, now three, and then you're going to just let your left leg skim the floor a bit. Now, you could do this by bending your knee and sort of kicking that leg, so you could try that. And then I'd like you to try, can you let your leg swing from the hip joint without bending your knee? And it's not a huge movement, just a little bit forwards and back. Let's do that on the other side. So let's walk back to our starting point again. And let's walk forwards with the left foot. So both feet um, in Tadasana, hip width apart to start with. Step the left foot forwards, one. The right foot's two. The left foot's three. And now we're going to swing the right leg. So again, you could do this by kicking the leg. So if you really want to get, yeah, a lot of momentum, you can kick your leg. But then can you do a smaller movement where your knee is staying straight? 
it doesn't, it's, yeah, so it's not about how far it goes. It might become smaller and smaller, but we're trying to feel the leg is moving from the hip joint, a little bit forwards and back. Okay. Walk back towards the back of your mat now. So we're going to take this into um, one of our tilting forwards balances, our warrior balances. So again, step forwards with the right foot. One, two, three. And bring both hands onto the back of your pelvis. So you're going to come back to this long straight leg tilting. And as your leg tip tips back, see how it is to let your body tip forward. So you're not over. And just try a couple of times. Yes, yeah? so you're not necessarily staying there very long. You're trying to catch that backward swing of your leg. Keep letting the back leg tip up and letting your body tip forwards. And so, yeah, we sort of, it's that journey. So maybe try two or three times on this side. Leg tips up, body tips forwards. With a sense of being a bit like a, yeah, a seesaw maybe. Good, good. Okay, do you, do you have a little shake out before we do the other side? Because these ones can get, you know, can get quite focused, <laughs> quite focused and a bit intense. Um, come back to the back of your mat. We'll see how it feels on the other side. So this time stepping forwards with the left foot. So one, two, three. I'm doing little steps, otherwise I'd like to end up across, halfway across the room. So the hands on the back of the pelvis, how is it to catch that backwards swing? of the right leg, letting the body tip forwards in response. And so we're really trying to let our leg lead this movement. That's nice. You know, so often, isn't it, we're, <laughs> we're leading with our heads. And this time we're trying to really, it's that back heel, the back leg swinging back, the back heel tipping up, our body tips forwards in response. Okay, I just want, I want to do one more variation of this in a moment, but maybe have a, have a forward bend first of all, because these ones can be a bit challenging on the lower back. So, folding forwards, letting the head go, letting the arms go. I think because of that, you know, the, because that back leg can feel quite long and heavy. Yeah, it can feel a bit of a challenge. So give yourself a couple of breaths tipping forwards into your forward bend. And then yes, and your own back up. So the, the variation I wanted you to try, it's a bit different, is um, stepping forwards, and I'll just show you, show you can try it your own way, um, is where we have, and I, do, I was wondering really, I was thinking yesterday, at what point do we bring the arm? So one arm is by the side of the head. So it might be that you start off like that. So that this is perhaps the little bit where you're experimenting with. Do you start off with the arm by the side of your head as you tip forwards and you, you try not to let that arm come too low down? Or do you start off with that arm on the back of your pelvis and then as you come down or you're down, you could bring the arm forwards. But what's quite important in this is you, you, that the arm doesn't end up coming with lower down than your head and the rest of your body. So it was standing on the right foot first again. So the right foot could step forwards, one, two, three. I think when I was doing it, I decided I'd have my hand on the back of my pelvis, my arm by the side of my head. So it's the opposite arm. So I've got the right arm by the side of my head. Yeah, so opposite arm and leg. So it seems to for me work better, but you could try the same arm and leg. Tipping forwards, good, very nice. And yeah, just again, there's sort of in and out, and you can try this other side as well. So if you feel you've done, if you want to do a little bit more on the first side, you can. Whenever you feel ready, you can try that same movement on the left side. So the left foot steps forwards, one, two, three. This time, if you're doing like I did, sort of opposite arm and leg, the left arm's up by the side of your head. The right hand is resting on the back of your pelvis. 
or seeing how does it feel to that sit hip forwards but keeping the arm on that side of your head. Your arm can be quite wide out to the side. So with these, it might be that we, you know, we capture it for a moment or two. Very nice. It's a very lovely, <laughs> lovely um. Interesting. Yeah. Looks fabulous. Well done. Well done. Yes, I think Siobhan, that you were doing just a little bit of um. We'll come into a forward bend, maybe just a little bit of something where we're sort of swinging our arms or having a little shake out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come down through a forward bend onto hands and knees. So now let's see how that knee does. Do a few things there and then we're going to revisit these balances and some others, like another in the standing. So from having a little bit of swing in your arms, come towards the back of your mat. We're going to come down through a forward bend, dog pose, child pose. So again, if it feels it would be nice to stay in your forward bend for several breaths, do so. We're coming into your forward bend. See how the back of your legs feel now. So it might be that your forward bend is feeling a little bit more, that you're able to release into it. Yes, and then again, up from, every, from forward bend, you stay there. Whenever you feel ready, you can move on into your dog pose. Nice, I got, I mentioned dog pose, and I saw Chili's tail um, go by. So dog pose, enjoying. We're seeing how the dog pose feels. If it is enjoyable staying there, if you want to go on into child pose, on into child settling down and just yes i don't know ch child pose might be okay mel but there's always lying on your belly um if kneeling isn't good or sitting and kneeling if child pose is not what you want to do so you've got these three options at this point child pose kneeling lying on your belly just letting the breath come in letting the breath leave you feeling the weight of your body settled on the ground And from child pose, we're going to be coming onto hands and knees. Mel, if your knee isn't working, you could come onto your belly and do some little things on your belly. And so we're going to do some cat movements. So that might be, or you could do cat movements and kneeling because your kneeling looks like you're okay there. So yes, for the rest of you, what I was going to say is coming onto hands and knees, settling down. Once you're settled on hands and knees, then exploring how do your cat movements feel today. So rounding your back, dipping your spine towards the floor. And seeing how it feels. And maybe noticing how you're breathing, noticing when you're breathing in when you're breathing out. And you don't need to change this, but just notice how and when your breath is moving through your body. In a moment, what I'd like you to do is round your back to the ceiling, stay rounded, tuck your toes under, and then walk your hands in towards your knees. So let your bottom come down over your heels. So, and then pick your knees up off the floor. So this bit might be okay for you now. So we're up here on the balls of our feet. Yeah, and this lovely sort of, so not a squat, so your heels are off the ground. Just this one where we can rock forwards and back a little bit on the balls of our feet. Letting the knees come down towards the ground and up a bit. So, giving the balls of the feet a bit of a massage and we are I'm afraid and Mel I don't know how this would be for the knee we are going to do, <laughs> do this lovely old favourite 
um, where the knees come down onto the ground and we sit with our heel toes tucked under. So, I, oh, I feel like an old favourite. I have to do this and think, oh, I should be doing more of this. So just have a couple of breaths here, as is tolerable, letting your shoulders drop, trying not to let your heels wander out as mine want to. And then come forwards onto hands and knees and drum the nice bit, <laughs> drum your feet on the floor. Okay, so you could be here doing that all day. Um, and then lengthen in turn, lengthen each leg out behind you. So one leg and then the other. That can feel very nice. So when you've lengthened each leg out behind you, come back to lengthening the first leg out behind you and then start to roll around the foot a bit and just explore what you can do here. So you can roll side to side across the ball of your foot. You can come onto the top of your toes. So it's just these little explorations of movement. When the leg is back behind us, what can we do with the leg and the foot and the ankle rolling around? And from here, you're then going to take that leg out to the side a bit and then that opens up some more possibilities of rolling onto your heel. Rolling right onto the ball of your foot, coming onto the top of your toes. So this starts to move even more into the hip joint once you've taken your leg out to the side. So just do a little bit of rolling around here, seeing yeah, what feels helpful, what feels good for your hips. And then from this movement where your leg has, you've taken your leg out to the side, you're then going to carry on walking your foot around so it comes to the outside of your hands or bending your knee at this point so you come into, into lunge. You might need to then walk your back leg away a little bit. So you've come into lunge with your hands on the inside of your front leg and we're just having a few breaths here. <sighs> Settling into our lovely lunge. Front knee over the front heel, leg out to the side. Good. Let the breath come in, let the breath leave you. Now, from here, we're going to step into dog pose. So, what I would, I would do then is walk my front leg so it's in between my hands. Then with the back toe tucked under, exhaling, stepping that front foot back, seeing how dog pose feels. If it's a long dog, you could walk your knees in a little bit. Just a couple of breaths in dog pose, you don't need to be there that long. We'll stay a bit longer after the second side of lunge. And then coming back down onto hands and knees. So whichever leg was forwards in lunge just then, you're going to take the other leg back behind you and start to roll, so I'll swap sides, start to roll around. So first of all, with that foot back behind you, rolling onto the top of the toes, rolling side to side across the ball of the foot. So it's a nice way to get the ankle, mobilize the ankle, mobilize the foot. Yes, from there, you can bring your foot out to the side more. See how it feels there to be rolling around again. Onto the heel now, when your foot's out to the side, you might have to roll onto the heel, onto the toes, onto the top of the toes. Again, seeing how you can use this movement to help mobilize your ankle, to get your foot feeling a bit more flexible, moving into the hip joint. And then from here, that foot can, you can walk your foot around. So if you want a wooden, I was doing this yesterday, my bedroom has a wooden floor. I could slide my foot around very elegantly. This time I'm just going to walk it around. So you come into lunge, your hands are on the inside of that front foot. You might need to then tuck your toes under, walk your back leg away a bit more. <sighs> Have a few breaths in your lunge, seeing how that feels. Letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. And from this lunge, we'll walk the hand, the foot in a bit so we can have the hands either side of the foot. We'll step back into dog pose this time and maybe a few more breaths in dog and then down into child pose. 
stepping back into your dog pose. You might, when you come into your dog, you might feel that you um, need, want to walk your feet into your hands if your dog pose feels too long. And yes, lovely. And then all of those little movements we can do in dog to help release. Bending one knee, bending the other, bending both knees. You stay in dog pose as long as you like. When you're ready to come down, you fold into child pose, kneeling or lying on your belly. Very nice. And so wherever you are, just taking the weight off your hands and your wrists, having a few quiet breaths, Feeling the movement of your breathing somewhere in your body or through your body. So letting the body settle and soften so you can feel the movement of your breath. Maybe just one more cycle of breathing, letting the breath come in, letting the breath leave you. And then coming back onto hands and knees, and we're going to do some of our, our tail wagging movements here because these can be so helpful again for the lower back. Uh, I need some helpful mobility around the centre of ourselves. So on hands and knees, as we often do, imagining we have a tail, a dog's tail, a fish's tail, might be some other sort of useful tail, those are two I always imagine. And then you're wagging or swishing your tail from side to side. And seeing how that feels. If your lower back feels tight as you do this, then you could look back towards your feet and that would mean that your lower back is lengthening out because for many many years I didn't like this movement because my lower back always started to twinge but then if you look back towards your feet that can give you a bit more length in the lower back. We can also do this movement using our legs so we could slowly take our legs to one side look down along the side of the body towards them the lower legs sorry so the knees stay where they are so take the lower legs to one side and look along the side of your body towards your legs. And so then we're really opening out through one side, lengthening through the other. So you can carry on doing this slowly from side to side a couple of times. And you can also swing your lower legs quickly from side to side, but I personally would then not add my head in. This can get dizzy quite easily. So swinging the legs. Again, feeling that movement of the pelvis. Now, you might just for a moment then want to sit back onto into kneeling or up kneeling, give your hands a shake out. So we're going to use that side bending movement to take us forwards and back. So back into child, forwards into face up dog. So come onto hands and knees, a long hands and knees. So a longer hands and knees, your hands and up under your shoulders. And start that movement of bringing your pelvis, swinging your pelvis to the right and to the left to take you back to child. And then that snaky movement forwards towards face up dog. Not doing anything that doesn't feel comfortable for your body. So backwards. But this side to side movement is a really sort of nice way of yeah, snaking ourselves forwards and back. Of course, if you feel that your lower back would really benefit from moving into face up dog by rounding your back and coming forwards, of course, you can do that. So, we all need different things in different ways. So, perhaps once or twice more doing that snaking movement forwards. 
might be nice to stay for a few breaths in a face up dog. We've done it a few, you know, each time we do this movement, we release a little bit more through the front of the hip joints and then maybe it stays, so it feels a little bit more comfortable to stay here. And then you might need to sit back over your heels and give your hands a little bit of a shake out. So we're going to come back into standing in a moment. We're going to go through dog pose. I was going to suggest you all know these, but I'll just show you just in case. I was going to suggest you do your one leg dogs. So there's with your pelvis level, there's rolling the pelvis and there's bending that top knee, which, all, which always makes my hip cramp, but you might quite like that. So on both sides, you could explore those one legs, any of them or none of them, you could explore those one leg dogs en route to coming up into standing. So obviously if you're doing those one leg dogs, you need to have really good handprints on the floor. So big handprints on the floor. And you need to be coming into a really sort of settled dog pose. So give yourself a couple of breaths in dog to see how it feels before you start taking a leg up. Because, you know, if you have got one shoulder that's feeling a bit stiff or creaky today, it might not be the right thing for you today. But it also can just feel this lovely sort of big, open, lengthening movement for the body. The sense of, yes, really reaching into space through that raised back heel. Lovely. Really nice. Yes, and if the hips, if it's not feeling right for the hips today, then that's, abs that's absolutely fine. Good. So from, do, yeah, doing your one leg dogs on both sides, and then it would be walking your hands from your dog pose into a forward bend, and then rolling up into standing. So yes. Wherever you are, dog pose, forward bend. And you're rolling up into standing. And let's yeah, just have a little shake out once we're up in standing. perhaps arriving in standing for a moment so settling down just seeing how it feels to be back in standing so looking at your feet <sighs> dropping the shoulders just feeling yourself in standing if it's helpful do a little bit of swaying from side to side and we're going to be revisiting a couple of the balances from earlier and doing one new one Let's, yeah, let's just do this loose, this easy swinging twist and then we'll, we'll come into the balances so we don't, get, we don't get sort of too fixed. So as you all know, one of the reasons we practice standing balances is that they're very focusing for the mind, but um, it's also possible to get a little bit too focused and fixed. So it's really important to also, you know, let, let that focus shift and widen. Okay, let's come to the back of the mat again. So we'll try these two where we were walking forwards and then we'll try the one with our hands on the back of the pelvis first. So you're going to step forwards with your right foot. One, two, three. Your hands on the back of your pelvis. Just catching that backward swing of the left. At this point, if you feel steady, you could try bringing your right arm forwards. Perhaps we'll try that one individually as well. But yes, that's nice if you feel steady. Beautiful. You can try that. And then coming through 
back up. So these ones can be quite challenging on the, you know, the hips, the lower back, so we don't need to stay there long. Going back up, let's try, let's try that left side and then we'll come back to the right and try with, with the arm up at the beginning. So come to the back of the mat again. Let's step forwards with the left foot. One, two, three. Let's have the hands on the back of the pelvis. The left leg does a little bit of swinging. You catch that backwards tilt of the leg. How does it feel to come forwards? If you feel steady and you want to try bringing your left arm forwards, you could do by the side of your head. remembering if, if your balance is not quite living up to your intention that's that's fine we'll come to the back of the mat we'll try each side again this time we'll, we maybe we'll start with the arm up by the side of the head so from the back of the mat stepping forwards with the right foot one two three so the left arm on the back of the pelvis the right arm up by the side of your head how does it feel to tilt forwards now but do we capture the movement for a moment or two moments? Let's, let's try the, the left side. This will be the last one of these ones and we'll, we'll come into a forward bend and then we'll, we'll do a, diff, a slightly different balance. So last side at the back of your mat, stepping forwards with the left foot. So one, two, three. We've got the back of the hands. Well, we've got the right hand on the back of the pelvis, the left arm up by the side of the head. We see if we can catch that backward tilt. Of the right leg, letting ourselves tip forwards. Now one of the many challenges with this pose is trying to keep the back of the pelvis level, which I know I do a very poor job with. On one side, don't be put off by me looking at you. Oh, that's very amazing everyone, well done. Well done. So that's it, the moment. Hello, Casper's come to see what's going on. So let's, let's after those, let's just come into a forward bend for a moment. So nice for the lower back, rest your elbows on your thighs if that feels better. Just let yourself release forwards and as, as importantly as what's going on in your body, just really letting your focus, your mind feel expansive and And then sink into your heels, roll up into standing. And you're going to come into a, a forward bend with your feet a bit wider apart. So you probably need to go the other way on your mat. So your feet are on your mat, <laughs> not off your mat. And in this forward bend, if you like, once we're in it, you can bend one knee at a time. So a little bit of shifting your weight from side to side. If your knees are happy with that, sometimes mine get a bit grumbly about it. So you might just be going forwards, sinking into your heels and the outer edges of your feet. You might do a little bit of side to side. Good. And when you've done a bit of going from side to side, so Rosie, we're in a wide, a wide forward bend. It is quite nice then just to have a few breaths in the center, releasing forwards with both knees doing the same thing. They could be bent, they could be straight, you could be holding your elbows, you could be resting your hands on your ankles, or the backs of your hands on the floor. Yes, that's very nice, Siobhan, holding your elbows behind your back. So make sure your weight's well back in your heels, Sarah, and everyone. Good. 
Okay, I've got, so from here, we're going to roll back up into standing. That's nice, Lynn, with your elbows on your thighs. Back into standing. So there's one last forward bend I'd like you just to have a little play around with. Um, we're going to go into it, no, for a balance from a forward bend. Now, it might be that if you've got some books to hand, which I'm sure plenty of you do, you may, you may or may not need them for this. So this really does depend. I say on the length of your legs, but then if you've got long legs, you might also have long arms. We're going to, from a forward bend, be seeing how does it feel to take one leg back, and then we're rolling the pelvis. So we're moving, I think that we did in our one leg dog poses towards our half moon pose. So it might be some of you need, when you're here in your forward bend, some blocks. It's better really not to bring the flats of your hands on the floor because you take too much weight into them. So sometimes it's better not to have blocks so that you keep your weight in your heel. But um, it's an option. And it might be that you don't take your arm, you don't take one arm off the floor, yeah? So the starting point is a forward bend. Keeping your weight in your heels, making sure your fingertips are on the floor or on a block. So that's, that's number one. <laughs> number one place to go to, forward bend, both feet on the floor, both fingertips, sets of fingertips on the floor. Then it's what would it be like to pick one leg up, lengthen that leg back behind you, but then roll in your pelvis. So the pelvis is facing forwards rather than down. And then it might be that your top arm comes up onto the side of your pelvis. So when you bring your top arm up, it first of all bring it onto the side of your pelvis. And then you can bring it all the way to the ceiling if you feel steady. Good, very nice. Beautiful, so your beautiful half moon pose. And if it doesn't feel very beautiful today, that's fine. Good, that's nice, well done. Remember you reach back behind you with your back heel. So it's really important to have the brain in the back heel. If the back heel wanders, that's what's gonna make you fall over, but it all looks amazing. Yes, Jan's having a little drink of water in between sides. I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> then you can, you can move on to side two. We will do with drink of water. And so, yes, Lynn, that's an excellent idea. If you've got a wall space, um, use, Hang on, are you facing the wall though? I'd have your back again. Yeah, go the other way. So you, <laughs> you're, you're turning so you're facing away from the wall. But yes, doing this against the wall is excellent. But I would, I would turn away from the wall. Otherwise, it's a little bit claustrophobic. Good. Yes, if you don't have a wall space, then you just have to see how it goes from the room. So remember, your starting point is the forward bend. Then it's bringing one leg off the floor. You've still got two lots of fingertips on the floor. You're reaching your heel back towards the wall behind you. And then the top arm comes up. Maybe onto the top of your pelvis, maybe all the way up. Good. Very nice. Wonderful. Well done. This is the last standing balance. You'll be very, very pleased to hear. And we're going to be coming to we're coming to the fronts of our mats and coming down through. I'll go to this front of our mat. We're going to be coming down through a forward bend and a squat. So it might be if you did have some books or so you wanted something to go under your heels, but be, the squat would be nice for the lower backs. So forward bend, letting the head go. And then from your forward bend, bending your knees forward. So we come down into the squat. And if you have got something, if you need something under your heels, and you've got a block to hand, a book to hand, a cushion to hand, what else could you have? Rolling up your mat, the back of your mat. And a few breaths in your squat. And from your squat, 
we're going to sit, be sitting down into cobbler pose. At the front of your mat, you could also. Okay, then you could lean back onto your hands. So it doesn't really matter. You don't you have to be at the front of your mat, towards the front of your mat. You're probably there anyway, if you did that. So yeah, leaning back onto your hands and just seeing how it feels. And then if it's comfortable, you could hold your ankles or your feet and we'll just do a little bit of this rocking from side to side. I'll wait onto one sit bone and then another. Nice. And then we can do a little bit of the leaning from side to side. So this is where we leave our legs where they are and we lean. And we can add the top. This looks, this looks very lovely seeing you all doing this and then i'm gonna you can stay where you are but i'm just gonna swing round so you can see what i'm talking about next so we're staying in cobbler pose but we're going to be doing this so from cobbler pose where your feet are quite close to your bottom you're then going to start to walk can you walk your sit bones back so do this funny little walk so you're walking your bottom away from your feet by shifting your weight from side to side and walking your sit bones back away from your feet. And that takes you into the cobbler pose forward bend. There, we managed to well done. walk back into this one. So it's quite a good way of sort of sneaking us into this cobbler pose forward bend, just for a couple of breaths. From there, we can lean back onto the hands and lengthen the legs out again. Give the legs a little bit of a roll. And I think you're all still at the fronts of your mats because we're, we're then going to come into this favourite one. So we were making our way, we're en route to lying down. We're going to be a little bit rolling. sliding the hands up the legs. So you're looking down at your belly, you're sliding your hands from your feet up to your knees. And so that's all we're doing to start with. We're letting the lower back ground out, we're looking at the belly, we're seeing how this all feels. So in a moment we're going to be doing this one where we're rolling and we're trying to sort of balance on this bit of the back. So sometimes it's helpful just at this point to bring your hands onto so it's the bit between your rib cage and your pelvis. We're trying to get that part of ourselves down onto the floor. Not always that easy. So we can slide our hands to our knees and this time roll back, keeping the knees set and then look forwards to come up. So this is our little abdominal workout, so rolling back, maybe not quite getting there yet, looking up. Just do this, keep repeating this a few more times, rolling back, looking up. So I find the more times you do this, perhaps the smoother it feels, looking up. And you can then roll back and so I like to lengthen your legs out. Have a couple of breaths. Use the ability to speak in this position. And then we can come back up again. <laughs> so we will do that lovely one that twice more. So rolling back, trying to get this sort of middle part, balancing on this middle part of our back. And then lengthening the legs out. Try to stay balancing. Try to breathe. Oh. We're up again. We do this one last time, and then from this one, you can lie down onto your backs. So, rolling back, rolling back. Lengthening the legs out, and then from here, letting yourselves oh, collapse down oh, onto your backs. And 
down onto the backs lie down so just lie however you are comfortable it's probably just nice to be lying down yeah things that feel good here rolling the head a bit to the right and to the left And also bringing the hands onto the front of your body, so feeling the movement of your breath in the front of your body. So perhaps feeling another couple of cycles of breath moving through you. We're going to move a little bit on our backs before we settle down completely. So from here, I always feel after that, that boat one, I like to open out through the front of my body. So we're going to roll up and down through two or three bridge poses. So you can bend your knees, you can stand your feet on the floor. It might be, I'm just, yes, it might. if you've already gone on to bridge pose, that's great. If you want to do a little bit of tilting your knees to the right and to the left before you come into bridge pose, that might also feel quite good. So just again, sort of asking your body what it would like at this point. And you can keep the bridge pose ever so quiet and easy. So it's really not about pushing yourself in bridge. It's just about seeing what movement is available to you right now. And it might be if your lower back is feeling tight, you just do a little bit of tilting your pelvis, rocking the pelvis towards your head, away from your head. That might be what feels good right now. So yes, two or three bridge poses, if that feels that would be a good thing, or a little bit of tilting your pelvis. Rocking your pelvis towards your head and away from your head. From your bridge poses, you're going to then hug your knees into your chest. Which always feels nice. So hold, that's it. Hold around the top of your knees. Do a little bit of rocking from side to side. If you're still doing bridge, that's fine, there's no rush. You could do a little bit of taking both legs up towards the ceiling and shaking them out. And then you've lengthened both legs up towards the ceiling. You can fold your knees back into your chest. And then keep your right knee folded into your chest and bring your left foot to stand on the floor. I'm just going to see how it feels to do a little bit of lengthening. So from here, you can lengthen your right leg up towards the ceiling and maybe hold around the back of your right thigh. So you're supporting that leg a little bit and maybe lengthen out. And then you can bend the knee again, fold, that's it, fold the heel down towards your bottom. And do that a couple of times. So lengthening the right leg up towards the ceiling, holding around the back of your thigh. And if that all feels fine, then you could do the same thing. You could lengthen your left leg out on the floor and do the same thing with the right leg. So sort of taking, that's it. Straightening the right leg out, holding around the back of the right thigh. You can even stretch into the heel or you can circle into your right ankle. So sometimes we do these sort of leg, I would say leg stretches or just these movements towards the beginning of class, but they can feel really nice at the end of class, particularly we've been doing standing balances. Good. Good. Yeah, so you can catch on to that leg wherever it feels comfortable. Good. Very nice. Okay. 
And then maybe for a moment, lengthen both legs out on the floor. Give the legs a little roll or bounce your knees. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then we'll, we'll do all of those movements again on the left side. So if you bend both knees, stand both feet on the floor, and then fold your left knee into your chest. That's it. And then you're going to have a little play around with from here. So you've got your right foot standing on the floor, your left knee bent into your chest. And then you can play around with lengthening your left leg towards the ceiling, holding around the back of your thigh. I mean, if some of you easily can catch your big toe, that's another option. You can just play around with that knee being bent, with lengthening the leg out, circling your ankle. You could point your toes, point your heel. Yeah, just whatever feels nice in terms of playing around with that leg being long and then bending the knee. Yeah, holding around the back of the thigh. Sometimes it's nice to hold with one leg and use the other leg to just slap out the muscles of your leg a little bit. Yes, in the front back. I feel like it's in the front, back in the front there. And then also do lengthen, if, it, if it's comfortable for you, lengthen the right leg out on the floor. And see how it feels to take that left leg up towards the ceiling with the right leg being long on the floor. If you don't like that, then obviously don't do it. Good. And the same thing, circling the ankle. You can play around with your right knee being bent, sorry, your left knee being bent or your left leg being long. And then yes, to finish, you could either take both legs up to the ceiling or both legs down on the floor for a bit of both. Yes, very nice. Good. Yeah, it's nice to all the, sort of the variations of what we want to do. So I'm going to do a little twisting movement and we'll do a little bit of um just a little bit of rock, let's see. What I'd like you to do from here is yes, just first of all, on your back with your knees bent, cross your arms over your chest. And start to let your knees tilt to the right and to the left and let your elbows come along with them So you're and your head. So you're rocking from side to side across the back of your body. Good. So in this movement, we're not really twisting, we're letting the whole of the body roll to the right and to the left. Okay. That's nice. And then let yourself rock all the way over onto one side. Now at this point, yes, if you if you need a cushion under the side of your head, you might want to grab one, but you might well be comfortable. See, I, yeah, you, might, you don't want to have your arm under, just have your arms sort of comfortably on the floor in front of you. They don't need to be straight or anything, but you're on the side of your body with your knees bent, that's it, and possibly with a cushion under the side of your head, or if it's comfortable with the side of your head on the floor, that can actually be quite good. And then what you're going to explore from here is rolling from the side of your head towards the back of your head and just letting your arms follow. So keep the arms quite soft. So as you roll from the side of the head towards the back of your head, your top shoulder is coming towards the floor behind you. It might not reach it to start with. But just let your arms sort of follow this movement of the head and of the shoulders. And if you want to, yes, if you 
but you also can let your top knee, your top knee could be sliding a little bit on the bottom knee. That might help. And you can also let your top knee lift a little bit away from the bottom knee so that you could roll your top shoulder all the way onto the floor behind you. That's nice. And, you might, and it's up to you. You might want to roll in and out of this or you might want to stay in this twist if you've brought that top shoulder towards the floor behind you. Just sort of, yeah, see what feels comfortable for you right now, whether it's sort of rolling in and out or whether it's staying. Good. That's nice. Let's let yourself have a few breaths. If your top knee feels that it's sort of hovering a bit, you can always pop a cushion in between your knees or adjust your legs so that they can rest more easily. Yes, yeah, so or a helpful little block you've got there, Mel. It's very good. We'll just have another couple of breaths if you want to do any more rolling on this side, and then we'll, we'll be moving on to the other side in a moment. So if there's any, yeah, if you want to do any more sort of rolling in and out of it, then. Yes, and in your own time, before we come on to side two, just roll onto your back and spend a little bit of time just on your back, just seeing how it feels to settle onto your back. Giving your body a few breaths, a few quiet breaths to settle. And when you've had a few quiet breaths on your back, you can roll on to side two. You can settle yourself on your second side. So again, have a cushion under the side of your head if that helps, or if it's comfortable with the side of your head on the floor, it can be really good for the neck. Your knees are bent at a right angle to your body. And you, if you bring that, so if you bring your feet forwards a little bit on the floor, then that can help you feel more steady. That's it, good. Good. And then you, you're thinking about rolling from the side of your head towards the back of your head and letting your shoulders follow, letting your arms follow very nice. So the arms can be really sort of soft and free. And I think in this one, it's really helpful to keep the arms quite um, passive because so much of the time we're doing loads with our arms and possibly overdoing it. And that's when our shoulders can get stiff. Good, that's very nice. But just keeping the movements really easy. You can roll back if you want. If that top shoulder, back shoulder isn't reaching the floor behind, top shoulder's not reaching the floor behind you, you can let your top knee lift up away from the bottom knee. That's it. And then once your shoulder's settled on the floor, you may find you can drop the knee a little bit. Or if there's a cushion to hand, you could always, or a block or something, you could always slide something in between the knees. Very nice. Good. So just a little bit more. You can stay there for a few breaths in the twist. You can roll in and out a bit. Whatever feels good on this side. And whenever you're ready, there's no rush, we'll be rolling onto our backs and just settling on our backs for a little bit of quiet breathing.
So making sure you're going to be warm and comfortable, we're just going to lie quietly with the breath and give ourselves this little bit of time and space. So I think sometimes this is perhaps the trickiest thing to find at home is a little bit of quiet time where we're not doing anything. We're just allowing ourselves to be. So if there are any little movements that help you to settle, I think sometimes just that rolling of the head from side to side can be helpful. Or if it's helpful to have two or three big sighing breaths, so we really give our weight down. Can be helpful to bring our attention into our hands if our arms are on the floor beside us we could just make sure the hands are soft and relaxed you can even for a moment clench them into fists and then let them settle if the hands are on the belly again just making sure the hands are quiet and soft And then gathering your attention into your breathing. So noticing where you feel your breath most clearly in your body. And there's no right and wrongs to this. It's just about feeling the breath wherever it makes itself present, it makes itself known. And letting your attention settle with your breathing for a few cycles of breath. And from the breathing, we can let our awareness travel out through our body. We can feel the points of our body that are in contact with the floor. So starting with the back of the head and moving down through the back of the body, feeling the weight of the back of the shoulders settling on the ground, feeling the contact of the back of the rib cage on the floor. Noticing your vertebrae, can you notice some vertebrae are touching the floor, maybe some are not touching the floor. And then down to the weight of our pelvis, feeling that heavy weight of the pelvis in the centre of ourselves, settling down onto the floor. And then down through the legs, depending on whether your legs are bent or long, how are they contacting the floor all the way down to the feet? Feeling the heels, the weight of the heel bones dropping into the ground. We can also be aware of our skin, this outer layer of ourselves. Feeling the air on our skin. So in a moment, I'm going to bring the singing bowl just for these last few moments of quiet. Quiet, let your awareness be expansive. So take in everything that's inside of you, everything around you, sounds, presence of others, 
or to these sensations, thoughts, feelings. the whole inner and outer worlds. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Hi. If you want to unmute, I don't know if I can mute. Unmute. So if I can unmute, you'll unmute me. <laughs> unmute yourself. I have to say goodbye. I'm going to. Oh, thank you. you. That was amazing. <laughs> It was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah, thank you, Karen. That was really lovely. So, thank you so much. So, yes, if you weren't here at the beginning, I was just saying that I'm, I'm not sort of starting classes back here, even though gyms are reopening. Huh? I'm not sure I even count as a gym, but um, yeah, <laughs> I think for the moment with this all the social distancing stuff, but um, yeah, certainly through July and August, I am going to be teaching most of August. I think I'm going to take a week off. That's it. Oh, that's lovely. Yes. <laughs> <Good. laughs> Good. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Have a lovely day. See you. Bye, Bye Sarah. Bye. 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 Bye.